What's up everyone? I'm actually driving today. It's been a long trip, been on the road about eight hours. But um, I figured I'd do a live. What else do I have to do while I'm driving, right? Um, on the simplicity and versus the complexity of law, so to speak. Um, the reason I thought this was a good topic is because when I comment on uh, some other pages, Facebook friends, obviously people I don't know and have never met, so I'm not going to say they're real friends because I don't know them, but when I will comment on something here and there, I get, you know, uh, one or two people that, you know, they want to come in and say, you don't know what you're talking about, you're a disinformant, you're this, you're that, and all these judgments start flying. And I just have to laugh because... Uh, first off, how do you know who you're talking to on Facebook? You don't. Um, how do you form a judgment without really knowing someone or their history or where they've been? So it cracks me up because some of these people that are, um, you know, pointing these fingers, pointing their fingers and making these judgments, they want to argue these points of statutory law, okay? So that's what brought this up for me was... You know, ever since I started studying law, I've studied both sides of the coin, so to speak, public and private. And I always um, did my best to simplify, okay? Simplicity, simplicity, simplicity. The law is simple, okay? Legal is complex. Legal is built off the law, all right? So when I get these people arguing with me, I have to laugh because these are the same people that say, well, the system, uh, you know, I don't belong to that society and, you know, I want out of that system, and, but yet they're going to start throwing out all these statutes and codes which are designed to regulate that system. So if they're designed to regulate that system and you're saying you're not part of that system, but you're using those statutes and co codes to hold them miles. accountable, you're still on the then you're obviously saying you're part of that system. So your actions will make you part of the system you're very much trying not to be a part of, okay? And this is the difference between public and private. Simplicity versus complexity. Private law is simple, okay? Public law is complex because you're accepting civil rights, civil privileges under a contract, and it gets complex, okay? Private law is very simple which is why I get into the Declaration of Status, inter vivos will, um, you know, a couple other things, the executor and things like that. That's all private law stuff being established on the record. So, again, this kind of, you know, these people on this Facebook that are blowing me up on other people's pages with their judgments and their comments about, you know, you don't know shit and, you know, this statute and that statute and title this and title that. And I laugh because I've been through all that. <laughs> been there, done that. Okay? And I got a call from someone last night I hadn't spoken to in two years. And he was there the day that I used the simplicity of the natural law in the public venue. Okay? And totally just wiped everything out. So, again, we get into complexities and all the legal statutory law, it has its place. But if you don't know which side of the fence you're on, or the public or the private, you're really going to get screwed. Because you can't apply private law in the public and public law in the private. You can try, you know. Uh, but everything private has to be done in private. So, I just wanted to bring this up for people who are really struggling with trying to understand all this information. A lot of the information out there is all legal statutory shit. And I will tell you that if someone out there is claiming that they've got answers, join my website, be a member, I've got answers, you know, rather than just saying, hey, be a member, join my website, we've got information. Anyone preaching they have answers out there, I would stay away from. Because there are no answers in the public. The answer is in the private, and that's why you don't see it because it's private and anyone that knows that knows to stay out of the public 
So keep it simple, stupid, right? Think of the old KISS acronym. Keep it simple, stupid. You know, very basic stuff. Affidavits are some of the most powerful things you can use in claims, okay? You've got contract law, all that, you know, that, that legal complexity is all in the public law. So, again, stick to private law. Keep it very simple. Who are you? Who are you in terms of the property, the estate? How's it being administrated? Who are they? Who's operating what? I mean, it's you got to know what hat you're wearing and who's wearing what hat. It's all about the estate. It's all about the estate. You know, you want to run into court and start suing people and using their law to do it. Good luck. I mean, you're going to be at it for quite a while, okay? Because court is a battlefield. That's what it's there for, to do battle. And if there if there's anyone good at battle, it's the U.S., okay? They're the best at it. They will run you out, run you forever through the court until they wear you out. That's the whole point. Private law is totally different. It's not a battlefield and everything is done privately and the facts stand and it's very simple there's nothing in the public you know and that which is in the public is kept very clean and neat on the for private law on the private side so again i always look for the simplicity in things and you know i've heard so many people say well that's not going to work well that's not going to work well you can't do that i mean some people that some of you watching me probably know very well as gurus Okay, you can't do that, you can't do this, and every time I did it, it seemed to work just fine, you know, so uh, for anybody out there that sees this video and sees me comment on something and starts pointing a finger and, you know, judging me, I'm just going to tell you right now, I really don't give a shit what you think. <laughs> I don't care what your perspective is, I don't care what you think of me, if I cared what people thought of me, I would not be where I am today, that's for damn sure. I really don't give a shit, okay? I treat people with respect. I don't go around pointing fingers, calling people disinformants and all that unless I happen to know for a fact that that's what they are, all right? That's different. That's different than calling somebody on Facebook you've never met before a disinformant. Um, but please don't argue the, you know, statutory this and that and, you know, title this and I, I just... I've got, I really have no time or tolerance for that anymore. I just don't. I spent years doing it and I really have no drive to even entertain it. Uh, I know how to dive right into statutory law, process and procedure when it's needed. It's not that I won't do it if, if it's needed, okay? But that's a very rare circumstance. Very rare, all right? Um, so again, keep it simple. Let's not get all twisted about the legalities of things. If you want to understand how the estate works, start looking up estate law. Start researching just basic estate stuff online. You know, I mean, it's everywhere. It's a, operating an estate. You can read about just just about anywhere. You know, um, estate law, trust law, very important. Um, wills, okay, wills and estates. Remember, an, an executor has no business in a trust, okay? An executor may uh, assign property to a trust or, or grant property to a trust under specific circumstances, under the will, but they're not part of a trust. They may hold property in trust as an executor, but it's not a trust. The executor is merely there to carry out the wishes of the will. So that becomes a big uh powerful point too, your inter vivos will. Do you have an inter vivos? Do you know what an inter vivos will even is? You know, how would you use an inter vivos will? Should you use an inter vivos will? You know, I know I have one. I've always had one. I, I wrote my inter vivos will years ago. I have um, rewritten it and amended it and things like that, but I have an inter vivos will and yeah, they're pretty powerful. Um, and again, once you do that, it's very simple, man. Just keep it simple. You're operating, you know, an estate in the land of the dead, okay? That's basically what you're doing once you've learned how to claim that. So that's the important part is the claim. Anyway, that's all I got. Just wanted to kill some time driving and hopefully 
uh, you know, encourage people not to get lost in the complexities and legalities of all the shit that's being thrown around all over the internet. All right, keep it simple. Study the principles. Stick to the principles. The principles, the principles. Okay, principles are foundations. You can't build a house without a foundation. Okay, keep it simple. Maxims of law, huge. Huge, huge, huge. Maxims of law are huge because you can build your knowledge base off the maxims. I've seen people try to use maxims as law. You can't do that. It doesn't work. It's not, they're not to be used that way, but you can build your knowledge base off of those maxims because they are thousands of years old and they're solid. Okay? Um, just, you know... For instance, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the matter shall be established, right? So no facts can be established unless two people were there to witness it. Okay, that's a maxim. And it's very powerful, which is why when you see private, when you get into probate law and uh, wills and stuff like that, you will see that the two witnesses is very powerful and recognized, all right? You get into statutory law, what do you see? Everything's got to either be under declaration or notarized. They don't really mention two, two witnesses very often in the statutory law because it's public, you know, one, one reason in, in my opinion. Um, they've also, you know, obviously turned private law into statutory law and stuff too in the, in the probate code and stuff like that. But you have to look at it from a private perspective. I shouldn't say you have to you should. I mean, that's what I do. I look at it from the private perspective and I start putting it all together with the, um, the principles of law. So again, just to reiterate, I'm never going to tell you I've got all the answers and, you know, uh, I'm going to sell you the answer and all that stuff. I have ideas. I have information. I have experience. I've done things. I'll share it with you. My work is not free because it's my work. Okay. Um, However, you know, there's a lot to gain from other people's shit. I didn't learn it all by myself. I looked at everybody else's stuff, but I kept looking for what are the simple points. You know, where's the simplicity in this? Where is it? And then align it with my own studies and research so that I'm not just copying someone else's crap, you know? Super important, man. It's very important. I see a lot of cookie cutter stuff and when people get uh, questioned, they don't know what to do with it, okay? I can tell you, there's a lot of people that ask about the accounts and do you have access? It, it's all real, it's all there, okay? I know that for a fact. There's only one way to access that stuff and I will never put that out in the public, okay? Never, I'm sorry I won't do it. Um, so, you know, privately is one thing, but I'll never put that out in the public. That would just be idiotic. Uh, but, but I can tell you, you know, uh, with conviction that it all, it, it all exists. Straight confirmed, it, it all exists, you know. But if you get too wrapped up in all the statutory stuff and you have the ego that wants to go out and hang people and, and burn them at the stake because they did this to you, you're going to get what you're asking for, a fight. So, you know, just be prepared. The fight is never easy. You know, the fight is never easy. However, there are other ways to go about things, and that's the road I choose to take. So, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Um, I see there's a lot of movement going on. There's a lot of people waking up. Um, I'm actually doing a lot of my own stuff. I'll share what I can when I can. But like I said, I just can't divulge everything and disclose everything and take people all the way to where I'm going because that's a private matter, you know. And if people can't respect that, then they're not ready to be private either. It's just the bottom line, you know. And anybody that's out there saying they've got the remedy and they got this and they got that and, you know, and the private side and all that, they're not respecting the private at all because they're out there blowing it out in the public. And that's not good. You know, for them anyway. Um, I've seen a lot of people that made it to the private side and lost it because they jumped back over into the public. You know, 
simple mistakes, man. Simple mistakes. You can't jump in the public once you're private. So, you know, keep studying the private stuff. Keep studying. I personally always knew that everything is happening in probate from start to finish, okay? And I've been, you know, through a lot of it. That's all I'm going to say. You know, all this shit everybody's looking at with all these court things and... Uh, when you have a problem, why would you do anything other than go to the root of the entire problem? Why would you start... If you're going to cut a tree down, okay, are you going to cut it from the bottom? I mean, true, there are some limbs you'll want to lop off the top. Okay, but in order to actually get the tree completely down, you got to take it down from the bottom, from the root, right? You got to dig the stump out, you get the roots out. For me, I don't want to address a problem other than that, other any other way other than that. Because if that's the root of the problem, I need to dig the root up and remove it, you know? So that's why I go to the estate, okay? birth, where it all started, where it was all probated from the beginning, okay, because you're in probate from the minute that that record is filed and, reg and you know, uh, recorded with the registrar, it's very important. How you get through that is a matter of privacy. So, anyway, that's, again, that's where I always go and look in the private law. Um, you can study your... You know, just looking at your state uh, probate law, and we've been looking at uh, Canada's land law, too. And in Canada, it seems like there's more answers in the land law than in the probate. And here, there seems to be a lot of answers in the probate and the land law, but more so in the probate. Um, so, you know, we're looking, and I mean, sometimes I'm blown away by their, how much they disclose right in front of your face and tell you. But it's because we're not reading with the right set of glasses that we oftentimes don't understand that they're telling us right to our face how things operate. And that comes with understanding the words, right? Land, real estate, estate, you know, understand those terms, executor, administrator, um, you know, those terms, a lot of those terms, specifically executor, administrator, uh, personal representative, they're used interchangeably, but they all don't mean the same thing, but they can mean the same thing depending on how they're used. Okay. So there's a lot of this. We all know there's a lot of this wordplay going on. Okay. Um, so that's why definitions are very important. The more you understand the definitions, the, the simpler things become, at least in my opinion, you know, it's very important to understand language, language of the law, you know, as much as you can. Um, it's very complex, right? So, again, we keep it simple. Maxims, read maxims, understand them. You're not going to use them as law, but they are the foundations of law. That's why they're there. So when you can build things off of that, off of the maxims, it becomes a lot simpler, you know? So, again, I don't want to inundate everybody with all this statutory guru speak because people are so confused as it is. They can't even figure out what's up and what's down and what's left and what's right. But I can tell you, you know, your status is extremely important to, to start, okay? Your status, obligation, so there's law of status, law of obligation, and uh, law of property, all right? Those three are very important. Obligation, status, property, very important, in my opinion. Just saying, keep it simple, all right? Where's your claim? Where's their claim, you know? Did you go through the right procedure? Did they change their records or didn't they change their records? Do you have your own records? You know, that's that's a lot of the, the meat of all of this stuff. And again, for those of you out there doing cookie cutter processes, you're buying off websites, you know, even if you come to my website and get templates that I've done, things that I've done, it's not going to work for you because you don't, if you're not understanding the substance of it all and how to act, your actions will negate all of that. 
So everything you've done, if you act a certain way, you will negate all of it, okay? You'll throw it all right out the door just by your actions. So learning to operate is key. So keep it simple. That's all I got to say. I hope that helps. I got a lot of driving to do. So uh, anyway, thank you all for letting me spend some time with you. See ya.